I think honestly, I as people don't as people say, I on I open Pandora's box. Shh. Ah! Dude, I am. I can't. This is crazy. I'm like backed into this corner here. <laughs> no, I just I feel it now. Um, <laughs> if you if you feel behind me, there's like a a cool breeze. It's going nuts. Something just what? Something just touched my neck. This is the creepy one. I don't like coming back here, but I forced myself to come out here. It actually is kind of scary. <laughs> Dude, something just knocked over the mail meter. That absolutely 100% proves that this house has poltergeist activity. Dave, we're in Greenville, Pennsylvania at Greenville Manor. Yes, we are. A house that was used not only as a family home and was the final home for multiple family members here, but also for decades, this house, this massive house was used as a funeral home. Yeah. And right here to your left is the funeral parlor, the viewing room. And this home was just recently, late last year, purchased by new owners. They're restoring the house and they're just getting started allowing paranormal investigators in here. How's it going, guys? Good. How are you, Marcus? Doing good. Well, me and Marcus uh, got a call, and his dad said, hey, you got to check out this place. And first we peeked in through the windows, and we were like, yes, we had to have it. In 1881, this huge Victorian mansion was constructed for Thomas C. Gibson and his two sons, Howard and Frank. For decades, it would be their family home passed down through the generations. We believe this would have been more for a private type, um, small funeral. As you can see, we've kind of set it up that way for a child's funeral. I have actually brought in um, stuff from an actual church. All of the items that you're bringing in, do you have a feeling that maybe introducing, reintroducing these items into the house has caused some energy to resurface that may have been laying dormant for years. Just as you're asking that question, I just got the chill, seriously, like all over my body. I do believe bringing in objects that the spirits recognize, that they actually either worked with or saw, the smells even, it's just like anything in your body, you remember. So we're bringing in these objects that they may have touched, they may have worked with, they may have seen, so, the activity has just started ramping up. Like I said, we brought the casket in a couple weeks ago. The activity started ramping up. We have some other objects that we brought in. It, you could just feel the energy just changing. It... Okay. <laughs> Not to like sound weird or anything, but it just felt like somebody took their hand and just kind of... Touched your neck. neck. Yeah. Um, that was, whew, okay. Howard was a hero of the First World War a decorated veteran and military man through and through. But on June 17, 1930, as a part of his normal routine since his discharge from the military, he prepared to clean his service pistol. That's when tragedy struck. It accidentally went off. It fatally shot him. His wife heard it and she went across and it was already too late and he had you know, passed on. We believe this is his room. You get the vibe in here, kind of like, don't be in my space. He's very protective of his space. He's very, he's very military. Um, right here, I didn't even notice this until a few weeks ago, we have this hole. Well, what we do know is it was a 45 caliber bullet uh, from, his, from a service pistol, because that's what they used. And this is a 45 caliber bullet. I was like, well, when I read that, I was like, and I saw that, I was like, I had to get one and let's just see if it'll fit. So I was like, well, let me just put it in there. And if you look, they filled it in, but that bullet pretty much fits in there perfectly. Wow. I am not saying this is 
a, a bullet hole. I'm saying it's so weird that, a 40, that he was killed by a 45 caliber bullet and it fits right into this hole. There's an EVP from this room. And I'm gonna tell you guys, it actually sent a chill down my spine the first time I heard it. We had asked Howard about what happened and it said, it said no accident. Many people think that Howard stayed to watch over the house. And many believe his spirit will still protect it to this day. Against this back wall, I have seen a shadow going across this way in full daylight. The shadow had to have been hmm, about this tall. Okay, so, um... <laughs> no, I just, I feel it now. Um, <laughs> if you if you feel behind me, there's like a, a cool breeze. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so when um, Howard had passed away, uh, Mr. McMillan was the undertaker for Howard. You can call it fate, or you can call it coincidence. But Mr. McMillan's business would be the funeral home that would purchase this house and use it for services for decades, only adding to the unusual energy and paranormal activity left behind by grief and mourning. We believe this to be a child's room. We've heard a scream in this room already. Now there's a darker side of this room. When you have a family member dead, some of the things you want to do is try to communicate with them. And we've had not one, but two psychics come up here and say they believe seances were held in this room. Two psychics have said that, and they don't, yeah. and they haven't interacted with each other no at all. No connection with each no other. No connection with each other at all. So that's why it's kind of weird that they, they say that. So it's, it's interesting. If what these mediums picked up on is accurate, we may be dealing with more than just the Gibson family and the residual energy of mourners tonight. A doorway may have been opened for any number of spirits or entities to flood into the house. Let me ask you this, where in the house do you feel is the strongest energy? <laughs> Without a doubt, the third floor. And I'm not too sure of why. Ooh, I'm gonna tell, I have to do this, ma'am. I'm coming up with some, from front, see this is what she does to me. Ma'am, I have some friends here, we're coming up. We're, they're just here to talk to you and to, to see what's going on. I just wanna let you know that. And this is the, the, woman. the, 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 the older woman? Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Every time I go up here, I get, it's the creepy, it's almost the creepiest place for me up here. For the first time on this walkthrough, Marcus seems genuinely nervous. Both he and Katie say this third floor is the most active. The question is, who or what is lurking up there? There is a staircase that was taken out, and you can see where it was taken out, but you'll see fingers and hands go like this, and you see a head pop out on the first floor, and they'll actually be staring at you. I've seen that probably three or four times already. Like there's someone looking down over, almost wondering what you're doing down there. Yeah, it's a little, it actually is kind of scary. Now we have this open space right here. So I put a door over that to kind of keep, we had birds in there when we first got it, to kind of keep the birds out. Well, one day we're leaving and you just hear, boom, that's the way I could do it. It's like smack, the entire building shakes. Well, a couple days later I come up, that door is against the furnace. Um, that, that's just one thing that's happened in this room. High EMF spikes for no reason. What we're was down. that? Did you hear that? I did. I thought I was hearing stuff before no. I said something. It was definitely a voice. Yeah. Um, that, that's just one thing that's happened in this room. That, that's just one thing that's happened in this room. I know you guys caught that. You had to have. Yeah, on one of these mics for sure. This, this is where things get creepy for me. Is this, bedroom we always we call it the blue bedroom or blue room whatever you want to call it so come on back guys Whew, this is the creepy one i don't like coming back here but i force myself to come out here 
right on that windowsill behind you, we had a Panasonic uh, DDR60. One of those crazy ones that pick up crazy EVPs. So I said, I'm gonna try it right over here. I put that thing on that ledge and you hear for 14 seconds, get out at the top of their lungs. And like I said, the old woman doesn't like things being touched. So apparently we did something wrong up here. And I said, I was sorry, but now we get a lot of activity up here. I just, I, I, she's not used to people being up here. This is the strangest uh, floor of them all, I, I would say. <laughs> Poltergeist activity, the oppressive energy, the voices. Is this truly just the spirit of a protective matriarch? Or could it be that something darker is waiting for us up here? Well, it's, I mean, the realtor didn't want to go, couldn't open up the basement. Marcus was determined we're going into the basement one way or another. And as soon as he opened up the basement and went down. I don't know, the next three days were just draining on us. Uh, we did nothing but sleep. Absolutely nothing but sleep. Do you think it was because the basement hadn't been opened in so long that it was almost like unlocking a time capsule? Yeah, I think honestly, I, as people don't, as people say, I, un, I opened Pandora's box. Yeah. Literally. Here we go. Um, but what we brought in, I think is also gonna spark some activity, but I was right about where that chair is, and there's a stack of chairs like right about here, and something ran into that room. And it was gotta be a, almost about seven feet, give or take, probably almost to the ceiling. That thing, it took off and it took off quick. Some trigger objects, I can tell you, you could feel the energy off of these things, especially when we brought these in now. Mm -hmm. But as we discussed earlier, we don't know exactly what happened down mm -hmm. in this basement. It's yeah. an unknown, but we know that they had to drain the blood somewhere and the fluids. So we kind of said that they're, they're under here somewhere. Mm -hmm. So there's literally blood, sweat, and tears in this, in this building. So a lot of memories in here. I'm sure this stirred up something down here when they saw that. Yeah. I'm kind of hoping it did for you guys. Because you uh, just brought this in this morning, right? Like literally this morning, yeah. Like, we got it last night from New York. This may stir up some energy that, like you said, like opening Pandora's box, first you open the door and open the box, now you're bringing items back in here that are familiar to the process. I think it's about time to set up for abandonment, Dave. Leave the cameras roll in the location while we're gone and see if any uh, unexplainable occurrences happen when the house is completely empty. So, you ready to get started? I am more than ready to get started, so let's do let's it. Let's go do it. As night falls over Greenville Manor, we have no idea what we're in for tonight. Rolling. Something's setting off the motion sensor up here. As we're setting up abandonment, I don't believe it's me. Hello? Unless it's being blocked by this. While setting up for abandonment, the motion alarms are going off repeatedly. For 10 minutes, we troubleshoot the motion sensor, moving it, turning it, switching it on and off, taking the batteries out, and replacing them. Finally, the motion alarm appears to have stopped triggering. All right, I guess that'll do it. Must have been something with the glass or something. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, should we just keep rolling on that then? Yeah, might as well just keep rolling on that. So it's time to set up the other cameras. But it would only stay quiet for three minutes. Cat ball's going off, cat ball's going off. We can't even get set up for abandonment without stuff going off. What is happening? I don't know, this place is off the charts so far. Physically, we can hear. The motion sensor's still going off upstairs, which we can't figure out why. We heard the mel meter detect temperature change, which the camera's not on up there yet, but we heard it. And as soon as we said we heard that, boom, the cat ball went off. 
We haven't even left for abandonment yet, and this place is just like Dave said, off the charts with paranormal activity. There it goes again. It's going nuts. Hello? Zero. It's a point six right now. Really? It was. It's at a point six right now. When we set that up, it was at a zero. Okay. There's that. Is that one rolling? Yeah, I just started rolling on this one. Okay. I don't get it. That. That sensor's still going off. Hello? That's a pretty drastic temperature change there. Uh, I say we hurry up and get get out of here because I think we're ready to. Yeah. Let's see what's up. Let's get this camera to the basement. Okay. It's important to set up the last camera in the basement quickly so the abandonment can start. But even that fell victim to a bizarre equipment malfunction. This clip that you're about to see had to be repaired using file recovery software. This is crazy. We cannot even get the fandom started because there's so much activity. There is a lot going on. I mean, I don't know how to explain it. I felt like I just got touch right before you turned the on, so. I don't know. Somebody's ready to communicate in here. The memory card was formatted within the camera, inserted correctly and seemed to be recording with no issues. But as you can hear, something is wrong. We've never heard this strange beeping in any clips we've ever recorded with this camera over the last five years, and we have absolutely no idea what could have caused this. But we have no clue this malfunction is even taking place. So we set up the camera, leave the basement, and make one last trip to the attic with an extension cord to plug the camera in so it doesn't die. That's the rim on the uh, millimeter. Hello? Motion. Just as we make it to the attic, the camera in the basement stops recording on its own, and the video file is unexplainably corrupted. Man, we brought all of these things up here for you to use. Right over here on the chair, there's a music box. And if you walk in front of it or try to touch it, it'll go off. That was not the thing. What the hell? Did it fall over? No. Literally everything is going off right now. Everything is going off right now. There's no way that was me. No, no that was not me. We let, all right, you understand, we're leaving. Yeah, <laughs> you've already done it. All right, now we're leaving. Besides that one occurrence, right before we left, when Dave and I were still in the attic, the paranormal music box has been completely silent. But seconds after the door was closed, and the house was finally empty, the music box started playing, and for over an hour, it never stopped.
over the next 18 minutes, the REM proximity feature on the Mel meter alarms 14 times, and the cat ball on the first floor lights up five times, all the while in the attic. The paranormal music box continues to play, and the motion sensors continue to trigger. In the 10 years that we've been doing these abandonment sessions, we have never seen this level of equipment interaction. It seems like someone wants us to know that they are here. Throughout the abandonment, we also picked up what sounds like movement. and even strange scratching on the walls. Whatever is here at Greenville Manor seems to want us to know that they are here and willing to speak with us. And hopefully, that's exactly what they do. I don't understand. Did we forget to hit record? No, I did hit record. Remember, I was recording us as soon as we got to the bottom of the stairs. And none of that is there. What is going on with... Something is really messed up in, in, in this house. All of our equipment has been screwed with. Yet yeah, I have never seen this do that to where this camera was 100% recording in the basement when we left. And we come back? And it wasn't off, it was just flashing an error. It was, it was like, it, it said the memory card had been jostled or the memory card had been, it was as if the memory card had been removed while it was recording. So far, every piece of equipment that we have has gone off. Yes, um, every single one. So we're gonna bring most of the pieces of equipment that we have up there with us. Which, do you have a free hand? Yes. Can you get the cat ball right there? I forgot about it. Got it. Okay. Up the stairs we go, and I'll grab the mail meter as we go by. Okay. There's some heavy energy in this place, man. There is. Very heavy energy. Ma'am, we're about ready to come up there. Marcus and Katie told us that every time they go up the stairs, they always say to you that they're coming up. So here we are. My name's Ryan and this is Dave and we're coming up. You wanna start in the blue room over here? Um, give me one second. I'm gonna set this camera up right here. Okay. I'm gonna run downstairs and go really fast. Okay. Cause I really have to go all of a sudden. And I'll be back up in a minute. I'm gonna leave you up here by yourself for a few minutes and see if anything happens. Okay. And just know that this camera over here is gonna be recording your direction. Whoa, cat ball. That cat, was not me. Cat ball? Cat ball right here in the middle of the floor. Oh, wow. It's still going off. You better hold it just for a minute, man. Something's about to pop off in here. Yeah. Hello? Ma'am, are you up here with us? Somebody's been up here making these devices go off. 
which is fine. We told you that's, yeah, like that. How about the bright red one right next to that? This is where the motion sensor was set up that was constantly going off. Yeah. And now the cat ball's set up there and it's constantly going off. Ma'am? My name is Ryan. This is Dave. We're just here to talk to you. We apologize if we're invading your space. I'm going to be quite honest. Yeah. I don't like the energy in here. Do you think this is actually the spirit of an old lady that's up here? No. No, I don't. It doesn't feel like it. No. The first time, when we first got here, I came up here and I took some, I always come around cat ball. Yep. That action cam's getting it. Um, normally I'll go around, take pictures, send them to my mom just to see what she thinks about the location. So I came up here. And I walked right through here into the blue room. I didn't hear it like out loud, but I could just hear in my head. Somebody went, get out. But also when we were up here filming with Marcus and we were getting ready to leave, I heard the same exact thing. Motion. Are you in the blue room? Do you want us to come back there? Dude, I'm telling you. That's exactly where I heard it. it was right, right where that, right where that thing is. We're coming back there. If you don't want us to, you better set that motion detector off right now. Or you better slam a door. Do you not feel that? That's not us. We're not even there yet. Look at, look at, point the camera at my feet where the motion detector is. We're not even anywhere near in front of it yet. Step back and step forward just so they can see. It's not us, you guys. And I don't know about you, but it's freezing cold right here to me. It is. It's a lot colder right here. Who's setting off this motion detector? If you were Do you remember what our names are? Can you say it? Dude. Somebody just came through there, man. I can't explain what that noise was. It sounded like... Shh. Ah! Dude. That was someone shushing us. <laughs> Dude, I am, I can't, this is crazy. I'm like backed into this corner here. Who, who are we talking to? Who's up here with us? Oh my God. Hi. We're not, we're not. <laughs> It just said some, he was scared or something like that. You guys, this is no bull. This is this is crazy. Dave. It just said Dave, but I don't know what it said before Dave. It said your name. Okay, my name is Dave. What was his name? Do you know my name? Why do you keep setting that off? Do you want us to step into the room? Is that what it is? I'll do it right now. I'll step right in there. Whoa. 
What did that say? Oh, no, it was a very deep voice. We're coming in. Let's just shut it off. Or point it back the other direction. Yeah, there you go. Who are you? What's your name? Bella. Bella? Tell me Bella. Is your name Bella? Bella, why do you scare people up here? Bella, where did you go? Someone shushed us very loudly when we were in that hallway. It scared Dave. <laughs> That's the same voice. Is it really? From earlier. Something just- What? <laughs> Something just touched my neck. Dude, just like Marcus said earlier, literally that was an ice cold finger that ran across the back of my neck. I'm not even you, dude. <laughs> Are you all right? Yeah. It just startled me. I like felt, it felt like some like pressure on my neck. I think something really wants us to leave up here. Guys, we're not trying to be dramatic, and I don't mean to keep shouting, but the energy in this room is crazy. I've never felt anything like this place. No. I'm gonna end the ghost tube session. And I want you to prove that you can speak to us, please. If that's you that's touching me and talking to Dave, Oops. Scanning AM. Was that a funeral song? It sounded like it. Where'd you go? Are you still here with us? Come on, come through and tell us to get out if you want us to leave and we'll go downstairs. Nothing. Mm -mm. Are you all right? Yeah. Are you feeling very... I feel strange. Do you feel like you want to leave or do you feel like you want to stay? I mean, I don't want to leave, but whatever's up here, man, is, is pretty strong. I know. I don't know, man. <laughs> There's something in this room right here. So do you want to go there next? We decided to take a break before our next session to calm our nerves. So we leave this camera set up on the second floor and step outside to avoid contamination. And seven minutes after we close the door behind us, the camera's audio captures a whispering voice that we can't explain. We're unsure of what exactly this voice is saying, but the hushed tone is unsettling. What do you hear? Tell us in the comments. All right, so we were gonna do the second floor, which is why the camera's up there, but now because 
Dave feels overwhelmingly pulled to the funeral parlor. That's where we're going to be going next. I do, man. There's, there's. Oh, yeah. Do you feel it? Yeah. All right. Dave is going to lay in the casket. <clears throat> Hold on a second before you jump in there. Oh, Wait for that to stop. Right. Huh? That's not very comfy. Okay. Uh -huh. oh, maybe I'll try. All right. This isn't the most flattering angle, so I apologize. My name is Ryan. That's Dave laying in the casket there. Come a long way to see you. Actually, I'm here for his funeral service. Is there anyone here in the house that can help me? We got a bunch of lights all over the place. Because the motion sensors were acting so strangely on the third floor, we set them up on the second floor and here on the first floor to see if they'll behave the same way on this session. If they do, the sensors may be broken. If they don't, well, then that would be very strange. Mr. McMillan? I hear you were a top-tier embalmer, a top-tier undertaker, and a top-tier mortician. Can you come talk to us? Or Mr. Gibson? Are you here? We heard you were in the military. Even fought in the World War. Hello? The first time that's gone off since we set up. In 20 minutes. Where are you? Which room are you in? Walking past the music box. Thought I just heard something upstairs. I just whispered. No, it was like a thumping. I heard you whispering. This is extremely weird. This is extremely weird. Thought I just heard something upstairs. Are you in the room with the baby casket? Or are you upstairs on the second floor? Are you in this room in here? <clears throat> you okay? Yeah. I just wanted to say really quickly that the equipment that we have set up right now is the same equipment that was upstairs with us in the attic. The same equipment, the same motion sensors that were going off nonstop are silent now. Tell me how that makes sense. <laughs> Is there someone here in this room behind me?
Whoa. What was that? Dude, something just knocked over the mail meter. Please come here. What? Where? Right over here on the chair. Are you serious? Yes, it was in view of the of the camp your camera too. That camera just caught this mail meter getting knocked over. What in the world? I was standing completely still and that mail meter just got pushed over. What is going on? I don't know, dude, and it is 100% in frame. It is. Mhm. Mm we're in shock. Both of us are completely still. All the doors and windows are shut. The furnace is off. There's no draft. And the mel meter triggers as it falls, as if something pushes it. If the chair it was sitting on was unstable, it would have fallen much sooner. We could simply tell you how long the device sat there, undisturbed. But why tell you when we can show you? I'm setting it down on the chair now. Let's start the timer. Notice how much we walk around it right after it's set up. Even when Dave forcefully lays down in the casket, it doesn't fall. And then we investigate as I walk around the whole first floor. Look at the timer. Look at how long it's been upright. And then 16 minutes and six seconds. Dude, something just knocked over the mail meter. 966 seconds total, to be exact. We have no explanation for how the mail meter fell over. It's bizarre, shocking, and what we believe to be the best paranormal evidence we've captured in years. That is really freaky because Marcus told us that there was poltergeist activity in here tonight, and that just proves it right there. That absolutely 100% proves that this house has poltergeist activity. That kind of, I, I jumped a little bit, man. I thought you, I thought you tripped. Even when we test it in the moment, we can't get it to fall over by itself again. I'll, I'll walk by heavy footed here. Okay. Yeah, the, there was so much vibration that you set off the REM feature function. of that. Yeah, the REM function. But it didn't tip over. But it didn't tip over. Now, something else I want to try is... I know. You're gonna blow on it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's... No way. Mm -mm. There's no way. No. And that really creeps me out, man. Yeah. Because I was trapped in this thing by myself. Yeah. Dude, what if you th what if what if something came in here and sat down? Oh, that's a good point. What if they sat down right beside the casket? We're going to go upstairs and do a spirit box session in the room where Mr. Gibson apparently lost his life to a fatal gunshot wound. So, let's go upstairs. <laughs> All right. Where is the uh Okay, so that's seeing me now. Cool. Okay. That scared me. All right. Mr. Gibson, are you up here with us? What'd that say? right here on the inside of this. Somebody was going like this. But like, I don't know, it was, ooh, kind of like that, right there. Like someone was rubbing the wallpaper? Yeah, it was like papery. That's weird. Who was that? Was that you that did that? 
Did you just make a sound on the wall right there? What? I don't know. I, I thought I heard, I just, something rather. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Gibson, is that you? Mr. Gibson, what happened to you in this room? Can you tell us what happened that day? Can I try it for a sec? Yeah. Are any of the Gibson family here with us? Who's been setting off all of our devices in here tonight? What? I don't know, but that sounded like that same man's voice that's been talking. What's the name of the person who knocked over our device in the chair downstairs? What was the name we picked up earlier? Be Bella. Bella, are you here with us? You wanna walk in this room where the seances apparently took place? Whoa. It sounded like it said if you something. Yeah. We spoke to somebody earlier who said their name was Bella. Where are you? Whoa. What did that say? I'm not sure. Where is the entity who said their name was Bella? going and turning on the s box good i can't hear you are you good yes i'm good okay sweeping okay so ryan is set up he's doing the estes help me was a female. What do you need help with? Who's asking for help? Tell Ryan your name. Don't you breathe? Don't you breathe or hard to breathe? Why is it hard to breathe? Can you tell him what happened to you? Why are you here? Did somebody hurt you? Yeah. Yeah. They did. Who was it that hurt you? Who is this something something? Two words I couldn't understand at the end. Well, my name, if you're asking about who I am, my name is Dave. That is my friend Ryan. And we're here to try and communicate with you tonight. Won't you come out and talk to us? You said somebody hurt you. Who hurt you? You good? Yeah, I'm just not hearing anything. I don't know if we should. Do you think we should? Um... Cause I'm not feeling anything down here. I'm not getting anything down here. I'm not either. Do you want a really quick run up? 
to the attic again and try and do an Estes up there? We can, yeah, if you want to. Oh, <laughs> Dave, gear. <laughs> what? Are you all right? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> My whole shoe came off. That <laughs> what is going on? Where is my shoes? <sighs> Guys, this is an amazing house. <laughs> but if you come here, remember the first two bottom stairs? <laughs> For some reason, are completely different than the rest. Let me just pick my stuff up here. We were <laughs> both recording that time. Oh my God. All right, I have a box in my hand now that you can sp speak to me through. Dave's gonna ask the questions in the other room and you can come over here to me and tell me the answers. We performed this Estes Method spirit box session on the third floor for nearly 20 minutes. And in that time, nothing came through and talked to us. Why am I not hearing anybody talk to me? Can you please come in here and use this box to speak? All I hear is sweeping. This part of the house is still so creepy, but whoever was messing with us earlier seems to have lost interest. Motion. Are you in the blue room? Do you want us to come back there? But at the end of the night, we are left with terrifying memories. Shh. Ah! Dude, I am, I can't, this is crazy. I'm like backed into this corner here. Hi. And shocking paranormal evidence. Whoa. What was that? Dude, something just knocked over the mail meter. We came to Greenville Manor not knowing what to expect. We left with unforgettable stories and bizarre footage that still gives us chills. That absolutely 100% proves that this house has poltergeist activity. Any investigators and explorers who are looking for locations to research the paranormal, we highly recommend you visit Greenville Manor. If you guys want to book an investigation, you can either message me, Marcus Haug, on Facebook, Katie McKinney on Facebook, or you can directly message the Facebook page at Greenville Manor, and one of us will get to you, both of us will get to you, more likely going to be Katie, but message us on one of those. We'll definitely get back to you guys, and I hope to see you guys soon. And if you want to follow us on our quest to find paranormal activity in the most haunted locations, be sure to subscribe to the channel and help us reach our goal of 100,000 subscribers. And remember to turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. We appreciate you all, and we'll see you next time.